Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to share to you the history of science, technology, and society in the Philippines. But before that, let us first define and give short background of science, technology, and society. Science, Technology, and Society, or STS, is an interdisciplinary field that studies the conditions under which the production, distribution, and utilization of scientific knowledge and technological systems occur and the consequences of this upon different groups of people. STS builds on the history and philosophy of science and technology, sociology and anthropology, policy studies, and cultural literary studies, all of which shape the modes of analysis deployed in the field. The intercollegiate program brings together courses taught in a variety of departments and is divided into three principal areas, histories of science and technology, philosophy of science and technology, and social science approaches to technology and science. Courses explore the effects of science and technology on society and culture, the politics of social technical systems, science policy in national and international contexts, the social and environmental risks versus benefits of technological and scientific advancement, and more specifically, cover the topics such as the political economy of pollution, the culture of the scientific laboratory, theories of race and genetic engineering, social networking and the internet, the body and politics of health. Science, Technology and Society or STS is an interdisciplinary field that asks questions such as how does science work? How are we to understand scientific controversies? How is scientific knowledge and practice affected by economic, political, religious or philosophical currents in a given time and place? How do societies and governments allocate resources for scientific research and science-based policies? How have scientific research ethics evolved and what ethical issues are now being contested? Now that we have understood the background of science, technology, and society, let us now go to its history in the Philippines. The need to develop a country's science and technology has generally been recognized as one of the imperatives of socio-economic progress in the contemporary world. This has become a widespread concern of governments, especially since the post-World War 11 years ago. Among third world countries, an important dimension of this concern is the problem of dependence in science and technology as this is closely tied up with the integrity of their political sovereignty and economic reliance. There exists a continuing imbalance between scientific and technological development among contemporary states with 98% of all research and development facilities located in developed countries and almost wholly concerned with the latter's problems. Dependence or autonomy in science and technology has been a salient issue in conferences sponsored by the United Nations. In comparison, technology has often been understood as the systematic knowledge of the industrial arts. As this knowledge was implemented by means of techniques, technology has become commonly taken to mean both the knowledge and the means of its utilization, that is, a body of knowledge about techniques. Modern technology also involves systematic research but its outcome is more concrete than science. Just like the production of a thing, chemical, a process, something to be bought and sold. In the past, science and technology developed separately, with the latter being largely a product of trial and error in response to a particular human need. In modern times, however, the progress of science and technology have become intimately linked together. Many scientific discoveries have been facilitated by the development of new technology. New scientific knowledge, in turn, has often led to further refinement of existing technology or the invention of entirely new ones. Let's go now to the developments in science and technology during the Spanish regime. 
The beginnings of modern science and technology in the Philippines can be traced to the Spanish regime. The Spaniards established schools, hospitals, and started scientific research and this had important consequences for the rise of the country's professions. But the direction and pace of development of science and technology were greatly shaped by the role of the religious orders in the conquest and colonization of the archipelago and by economic and trade adopted by the colonial government. The interaction of these forces and the resulting socio-economic and political changes must, therefore, be analyzed in presenting a history of science and technology in the Philippines. Spanish conquest and the colonization of the archipelago was greatly facilitated by the adoption of an essentially religious strategy which had earlier been successfully used in Latin America, known as reduction. It required the consolidation of the far-flung, scattered barangay communities into fewer, larger, and more compact settlements within the hearing distance of the church bells. This was a necessary response to the initial short shortage of Spanish missionaries in the Philippines. This policy was carried out by a combination of religious conversion and military force. The net result of reduction was the creation of towns and the foundation of the present systems of local government. The pre-colonial ruling class, the Datus, and their hereditary successors were adopted by the Spanish colonial government into this new system to serve as the heads of the lowest level of local government. For example, the Cabeza de Barangay. The colonial authorities found the new setup expeditious for establishing centralized political control over the archipelago for the imposition and collection of the tribute tax enforcement of con compulsory labor services among the native Filipinos, and implementation of the compulsory sale of local products to the government. Filipinos naturally resisted reduction as it took them away from their rice fields, the streams, and the forests which were their traditional sources of livelihood and also subjected them to the wondrous economic exactions by the colonial government. Thus, the first century of Spanish rule brought about serious economic dislocation and a decline in agricultural production and traditional crafts in many places. In the region surrounding the walled city of Manila, Filipinos migrated from their barangays to the city in order to serve in the convents and thus avoid the compulsory labor services in the shipyards and forests. Over centuries, this population movement would greatly contribute to the congestion of Manila and its suburbs. At the end of the Spanish regime, the Philippines had evolved into a primary agriculture exporting economy. Progress in agriculture had been made possible by some government support for research and education in this field. But it was largely the entry of foreign capital and technology with which brought about the modernization of some sectors, notably sugar and help, hemp production. The lack of interest and in support of for research and development of native industries like weaving, for example, eventually led to their failure to survive the competition with foreign imports. Because of necessity and the social prestige attached to university education, medicine and pharmacy remain the most developed science-based profession during the Spanish regime. Let us go now to the developments of science and technology during the American regime. Science and technology in the Philippines advanced rapidly during the American regime. This was made possible by the simultaneous government encouragement and support for an extensive public education system, the granting of scholarships for higher education in science and engineering, the organization of science research agencies and establishment of science-based public services. The Americans introduced a system of secularized public school education as soon as the civil government was set up in the islands. On January 21, 1901, the Philippine Commission, which acted as the executive and legislative body for the Philippines until 1907, promulgated Act No. 74, 
creating a Department of Public Instruction in the Philippines. It provided for the establishment of schools that would give free primary education with, with English as medium of instruction. This was followed by the setting up of a Philippine Normal School to train Filipino teachers. Secondary schools were opened after a further enactment of the Philippine in Commission in 1902. The Philippine Medical School was established in 1905 and was followed by other professional and technical schools. These were later absorbed into the University of the Philippines. The colonial authorities initially adopted a coordinated policy for the promotion of higher education in the sciences and government research and agencies performing technical functions. The University of Philippines was created on June 18, 1908 by Act of the Philippine Legislature. Among the first colleges to be opened were the College of Agriculture in Los Baños, Laguna in 1909. The Colleges of Liberal Arts, Engineering and Veterinary Medicine in 1910, and the College of Law in 1911. By 1911, the university had an enrollment of 1,400 students. Four years later, its enrollment had almost doubled to 2,398 and the university included two new units, a school of pharmacy and a graduate school of tropical medicine and public health. In 1916, the School of Forestry and Conservatory of Music were established, and in 1918, the College of Education was opened. Except in the College of Medicine, where there were already a number of Filipino physicians who were qualified to become its faculty members when it was opened in 1907, most of the early instructors and professors in the sciences and engineering at the University of Philippines were Americans and other foreigners. Qualified Filipinos were sent abroad for advanced training and by, by this means foreign faculty were gradually replaced with Filipinos. For example, in 1920, Filipino PhD graduates of U.S. University took over the Department of Agriculture, Chemistry in the College of Agriculture. By December 1926, the university's enrollment in all colleges had reached 6,464 and out of total teaching staff of 463, only 44 were Americans and other foreigners. Educational and science policy during the American regime was not coordinated with colonial economic policy. While Filipinos were provided opportunities for higher education in sciences and engineering, the economy remained basically agricultural. To a great extent, Philippine economic development was determined by free trade relations established in 1909 between the Philippines and United States, and this continued long after independence was achieved in 1946. As a result of this policy, the Philippine economy became tied to, the, to that of the United States, remaining primarily an exporter of agricultural crops and raw materials and an importer of American manufactured goods. Undoubtedly, this delayed Philippine industrialization. The relative underdevelopment of physical sciences, the medical and agricultural sciences may be traced to this policy. Basic and applied research in the medical, agricultural, and related sciences received much greater government support during the American regime than did industrial research. Now that we have finished discussing the short background and history of science, technology, and society during the Spanish regime and American regime, I hope you have gained new knowledge and apply it into reality. See you in the next videos. Bye!